We got our first taste of the modern brand Renault in 2011 with the Fluent Saloon. And while the car has just been coasting along since then, the brand Renault has really grown, its acceptability has increased drastically and desirability has shot up too, all thanks to the Duster SUV. So on the back of that success, Renault is looking to boost the fortunes of the Fluence once more. And this time, along with a new facelift. Let's see what it's got. The way the huge Renault logo sits in the middle of the slim grille makes it seem like the Fluence is blowing you a kiss. In a very classy way, of course. The headlamp design is the same, although now they use projector headlamps. And the bumper is completely redesigned for a more athletic look and also sports LED daytime running lights. Viewed from the side, the Fluence boasts a strong but swoopy stance. The only change here is the design of the alloy wheels. And except for the splashes of chrome, the handsome rear remains unchanged. But when you peek inside, you'll find that the cabin of this top-end E4 variant doesn't look and feel very different from before. Well, that's hardly something to complain about because the Fluence is boasted of a spacious and comfortable cabin that's really got a lot of equipment. But Renault has made a few light tweaks to freshen up the cabin. There's a new Arkame sound system that uses 8 speakers. There's a blue tinge for the digital display and a smattering of chrome for a richer feel. But what makes the Fluence all the more interesting is now the base E2 variant also comes with a whole load of equipment to make it better value. The base variant will also boast of the new look. It will also get the LED daytime running lights and projector headlamps. It will also get cruise control, rear parking sensors and beige finish for the interiors. So what is the Fluence like on the road? Well Renault has discontinued the petrol motor in the Fluence, so there was only the diesel for us to sample. The 1.5 litre K9K is a proven motor and it continues to be offered here in the 108 bhp state of tune. There have been no mechanical changes to the Fluence, so it isn't different in terms of the way it drives. Basically, this isn't the punchiest motor in its class and the turbo lag takes some getting used to. But once you're past 2000 rpm, it is easy to drive and a pleasant companion to. The suspension has been one of the Fluence's strong points. It can take our roads with composure and shows quite a bit of elan when hustled hard. So the facelifted Fluence isn't drastically different. But now the solid mechanical package is wearing a more attractive look. And the deal is sweetened further as the Fluence is now equipped with better features too. The other car that Renault is hoping to boost the fortunes of is their bigger, more luxurious SUV, the Colios. The automatic transmission is made it to the same 171 bhp 2 litre diesel motor that Renault car drove earlier with the manual transmission. Although punchy, she found the turbo lag to be a bit of a bother. Does the 6-speed automatic improve things here? Now you'd want an automatic gearbox to take the hassle out of driving in Stockholm city traffic but this will feel a bit out of sorts there because of two things. First and foremost, the engine has a fair amount of turbo lag and it isn't helped by the fact that the gearbox itself feels a bit slow. This gearbox does not like being rushed. For instance, even when you're cruising and you smash your foot down to make an overtaking maneuver, it takes a bit of time to make that gear change and then build up pace. The automatic Colios felt at home in a very narrow zone. The drivetrain really feels at its best when you're cruising on the highway. 
On top of that, this Renault is only available as a 5-seater and that too at a lofty 25 lakh rupee price tag. Which means the Colios is going to find the going tough when pitted against rivals like Toyota's Fortuner and Hyundai's new Santa Fe. Kerala, they call it God's own country. And every once in a while, it's nice to come down here for a break, especially on a particular Sunday of the year, if you're looking for a different kind of God. The God of supercars. And when the supercar God is in town, you get woken up in style. Porsches, BMWs, Audis and a Lamborghini each lend their voice to the cause. 22 of these exotics roared, screamed and thundered around Kochi, summoning supercar enthusiasts to keep their date at the Bolgati Palace grounds with Beats Super Sunday. This is the second edition of uh, Pete Super Sunday. We did one uh, maybe around one and a half years ago, that was way back in 2012. We got a lot of uh, calls after that, soon after that, saying that you guys didn't leave it enough, we didn't get enough view of the cars, we need to see it more and stuff like that. So this time we basically wanted to have the cars there for the full day so that more people can see it. At this beautiful venue, the cars settle down to greet the crowds. As the enthusiasts turned up, they realized that they got a lot more than they had bargained for. Well, there's lots of action here. You've got the super bike standing outside. You've got those dinky RC cars going mental all over the place. And then there's this. This is a slightly overgrown RC car, if you ask me. The Raid Cyclone. The cyclone was taking visitors for rides and as it leapt in and out of a shed and over ramps, it left people breathless. The Traxxas RC cars were also leaving the crowd spellbound. These nitro fueled RC cars might have been small in size, but they were huge on performance. These RC cars are capable of hitting 160 km an hour from standstill in 5 seconds. Now the cars are sitting as pretty as ever, but what makes them all the more interesting here and now are the people who are using them. Genuine enthusiasts. Let's get to know some of them. These owners showed a delightful air of casualness about the machines they own. Like the owner of this Porsche 911, which was almost as loud as a GT3 racer. I almost use it uh, four days a week. This car has been with me for the last uh, seven months. I've covered 4,500 kilometers. So it's, it's, it's almost my like uh, daily driven car. You now 997, this is a model which is uh, very practical, maintenance free. You can, uh, it's very hassle free car. This R8 may be driven by a father and daughter, but it isn't treated as a showpiece. It's amazing. First of all, it's a supercar and uh, I love driving the R8. I'm like addicted to it, it's my baby. <laughs> How long did you get the R8? We bought it brand new in 2012, uh, April. For the last two years it is, uh, it is with, with us. And how many kilometers have you uh, done? Just, we had done only 8,000 kilometers. And then there was the mother and son team that went to great lengths to get the BMW Z4. Last oh number God. only I bought this car and uh, before I was using BMW that? X3 and also I am using. How was it to drive with so many other cars today? Today, today, actually it was so thrilling, no? <laughs> so many, ten, I think almost 25 cars, all super cars driving and I am the older one. <laughs> driving with this young Payens, it was fantastic drive. And all these cars have one thing in common. And that is the tuning house from Kochi, Beats. 
we need to make this something like Goodwood Festival of Speed. So that's where we're aiming for. You can see the crowd turnouts. It's people who really want to see these cars together and it's very rarely you see these on the roads. Clearly, the formula worked and the visitors couldn't get enough. They lined every centimeter of the park as the bikes and the cars streamed out. Cheering until the very last one drove away. Given the response, Beat Super Sunday is clearly here to stay. Don't go away right after this break, Ormus talks about Hyundai's plans in school.